Good evening, Sato Academy parents, faculty, staff, LBUSD executive staff members, LBUSD school board members, honored grant, or I'm sorry, honored guests, and most importantly, our class of 2019. I am Giovanni Chia, ASB president for the 2018 to 2019 school year. It is my distinct honor to welcome you to the graduation ceremony of Sato Academy of Math and Science. Now, please stand for the presentation of colors and Pledge of Allegiance by seniors, Braden Schmidt, Chris Smith, and Zach Smith. Color guard, attention. Color guard, advance. Color guard, cross the colors. Color guard, post the colors. Those in uniform salute, those not, place your right hand over your heart and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to this flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two, color guard is dismissed. Please remain standing for our national anthem sung by senior Jade Rabb. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet for the land of the free and the home of the Thank you all, you may be seated. Good evening, I'm Mona Merlot. I am the principal of Sato Academy and Math and Science. And before we roll into the complete program, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge two students and awards that are very prestigious that were overlooked last night at our award ceremony. First, I would like to acknowledge and please have stand, Dexton Sparavan. I can't even begin to imagine how a student misses absolutely no days of school from kindergarten through 12th grade. Wow. 
I personally was thinking about taking tomorrow off. <laughs> um, I sincerely apologize, Dexton, that that was overlooked last night. So congratulations. You may be seated. And if I can have one more student, please stand. Elijah Sexton. So one of the newest awards that the College Board presents is called AP Plus Project Lead the Way. It's not easy to obtain, especially in two pathways. It requires passing at least two courses proficiency in either AP or Project Lead the Way and one course in the other component. Elijah Sexton passed in both engineering and biomedical sciences. Nationwide, only 73 students were given this recognition, and three of them are on this stage before you. And Elijah, I so apologize that your name was not called last night, so congratulations. I would like to take a moment and recognize our guests that are with us tonight. If you would please stand when I call your name to be recognized. We'll begin with Superintendent Mr. Chris Steitenhauser. Deputy Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Jill Baker. <laughs> Deputy Superintendent of Education Services, Ruth Ashley. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent of High Schools, Pete Davis. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent of Middle Schools, Jay Camerino. Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Schools, Brian Moskowitz. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent School Support Services, Dr. Tiffany Brown. <laughs> and our Board of Education is also here. In fact, thank you for canceling your board meeting so that all of you could be here. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll begin with uh, President Diana Craighead. She represents District 5. Next is John Meyer. John Meyer is the board's vice president and represents District 4. Dr. Felton Williams. Dr. Williams represents District 2. And Megan Kerr represents District 1. Thank you all for being here tonight and the role that you have played in supporting Sato Academy. I would also like to recognize down in the crowd, Doug Sato, if you would please stand and be recognized on this side of the stage. Doug has collaborated with me in developing Sato Academy into a school program that carries the qualities and traits of Eunice Sato in everything that we do. Thank you, Doug, for your continued support to make us an outstanding school. It is now my honor to introduce to you Dr. Christina Lee. Dr. Lee came to Hill Classical Middle School, where Sato is now housed, as a seventh grader who did not speak any English. Not only did she not speak English, she was here on a sponsorship of a Christian family who accepted her and her aunts who survived the genocide award in Cambodia. Despite the language barriers and the other challenges that she faced, Christina managed to not only acquire the English language with the support of the de dedicated teachers at Hill Classical Middle School, she went on to successfully graduate from Poly Pace program. Right? <laughs> Christina then went on to medical school where she became a family medicine doctor through UC Irvine School of Medicine. And Dr. Lee, like Eunice Sato, is committed to community service, enjoys raising her family, and has also opened the Majestic Medical Clinic here in Long Beach. Please welcome Dr. Christina Lee. Jim Reepsul, 
that's Cambodian for hello. Congratulations, very first graduating class of Saddle Academy. <laughs> you are the legacy of first. Do you remember about four and a half years ago when you and your family made the decision to attend Saddle? How nerve-wracking that must have been, right? But you guys, your family made a wonderful decision. And so again, congratulations. <laughs> and if you want a, bit, a good close-up picture of you walking down here, I have it on my Facebook, right there. And also the teachers as well. Again, congratulations, and you have set Sato Academy on the map of world's best high school education. Before I go on though, I'd like to thank Principal Merlo for the invitation to be your commencement speaker. And I also would like to thank all the teachers for imparting wisdom and knowledge to you. Henry Adams says, a teacher impart or affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stopped. Thank you, teacher, and I salute each of you because your influence on students do last a lifetime. Like my Hill Junior High School ESL teacher, Mr. Bound, who taught me English because I didn't speak any when I came to the state. And he encouraged me and taught me and pushed me to go into the regular English class just only after one year in his class. And he even wrote me a student council speech that I memorized, and then I won that election that year. It was nerve-wracking, though, I can tell you that. But that was the start of my leadership journey. And I thank you all, teachers, and I am humbly honored to be here today. I was invited to be a speaker here because, like you, I am also one of many first. Sato Academy was formerly Hill Junior High School, my very first formal school that I attended when I first immigrated here to Long Beach in the early, yes, go Polly, in early 1980s when the influx of refugees were coming to the U.S. due to the, Cambodia, uh, the war in Cambodia. During those years of early education, the school had provided me with a solid foundation in math, science, and even leadership through student council. Without knowing any English upon my arrival to the United States, I eventually became the first Cambodian American women medical doctor to open a medical clinic in Long Beach, just like Eunice Sato. <laughs> Who was first woman and an Asian mayor for Long Beach. I am here to share with you that despite a life of struggles and loss, it is possible to have a rewarding future. My life struggles and challenges have shaped me and changed me, but I did not give up as I was holding on to my dying mom's word and a hope in Jesus Christ that I later discovered. Through it all, through it all, I chose not to be a victim, but to be a victor. I chose to work hard and grab the opportunity that presented themselves and try to do the very best that I can. My dying mom's word was the follow. Daughter, one day you will go west. There will be plenty of food and you shall no longer be hungry. But do not forget this. Education will be your key. It is something that neither the communist nor anyone else can take away from you because it is your mind. They can take away your possession. They can make you wear a certain clothes of a certain color, which was black, or they can force you to work, but they cannot take away your education, your knowledge that you obtain, and they cannot make you feel stupid. Now, many of you may not know what I'm talking about without knowing a little bit about the Cambodian genocide that was committed by Cambodia's own people who were under the ruthless leadership of a communist party under the dictatorship of Pol Pot, the Khmer Rouge that killed and destroyed more than half of its own population from 1975 to 1979. So here's my story. The Khmer Rouge seized the country of Cambodia in 1975. We were given instruction to leave our home in the city for just three days, that's what they say, and we were told not to take anything as we would be returning to our home shortly. 
I was only seven, and my sister was just four. Well, you know what? Three days turned into more than three years. Actually, it was almost four years. They evacuated and they exiled the city residents and other people in other regions into the jungle where there was no homes and there was no food. They just simply starved and tortured us. Everyone had to be in a labor camp and they had to work to earn food. What food? Pretty much nothing. There was no food. If you're not dead by starvation, famine, or torture, then illness would get you. You would then be sent to the hospital where it is such a place for just dying place with what they consider to be useless people. Then you simply die. Many people lost their family members during this time through the various means I mentioned. Of, out of my family, I am the only survivor. All of this is to let you know that you are very blessed to be in this country. So please love your family, hug them, and appreciate them. And remember, education will be the key to your future success. Now, as a doctor, let me quote someone who has a doctor title. How about this practical advice? Be who you are and say what you feel. Because those who mind don't matter. And those who matter don't mind. Does anyone recognize this quote? Why, well, of course, it's Dr. Seuss. I have to mention Dr. Seuss to you because, you know, many of his books contributed to my early learnings of English. And I also saw, saw some of them that you guys put up in your hallway when I went back to visit recently. So I have to include that. Joking all aside, though, today is a milestone for all of you. You have come a long way. What has your own life journey been so far? You have heard my story of being an orphan child, a war refugee, to becoming the first Cambodian American woman medical doctor to open up the clinic here in Long Beach to serve my community that I first arrived in. I am here to share with you that life may sometimes seem unfair because of your skin color, tough, Unfair, lonely, and even sometimes impossible. But fear not, okay? And do not ever lose hope, especially when you go to college. It's so different. But do not lose hope. <laughs> for me, though, the saving grace for my then so empty, meaningless, scared, and lonely life came through a Christian family. They were coming to America, and they left this Bible right on top of a small dining table for us to read. And in it, throughout there, was a message of hope that I had discovered to be very healing and life-giving for me because I almost died during the war. Do you know that I used to go to sleep hungry, scared, lonely, and I used to eat bugs, plant roots, tadpoles, and even large fire ants. Yes, you heard it right. Tadpoles, fire ants, bugs. Like other young children and adults at the time, I was forced to work to stay alive during the war. All those horrible experiences, though, have added up to my life story, and they have shaped me into who I am today, which is a compassionate physician, a pastoral leader, and a passionate community volunteer. So today, I ask you this. What is your legacy story so far? What are the many colorful tapestry and exciting adventure that awaits to be woven into your life as you embark on your college and personal or personal adventure? I invite you to stay open to having connections with your friends and family and also to look forward to new friends whom you will soon meet. In closing, I invite you to remember this passage that I come across, written by Bradley Whitford. Take action. Every story you ever heard, every leader that you ever admired, every little thing that you have ever accomplished is the result of taking action. You have a choice. You can either be a passive victim of circumstances, or you can be the active hero of your own life. And I agree with him. 
And, I, and also, do you know that you do not need the power of Thor, nor the speed and the blazing presence of Captain Marvel, nor the intellect of Iron Man to be a superhero? You have the power of greatness all within. You do not need the power stones to fulfill your greatness and destination. You have it all right here and right here, right there. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it best, intelligence plus character, that is the true goal of true education. So, class of 2019, you have all laid a solid foundation at Sato Academy for a legacy of firsts. My life has been about being resilient as difficult times are inevitable. So remember, Focus and go forward, move forward. Thank you, and may the blessing of the Almighty Divine be upon all of you today for your special day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Christina Lee. I'm not even sure how to follow that up. That was so amazing. You give us hope for what our students can do and how they will go about doing it. I saw a lot of heads nodding as she spoke among our students. I hope that you heard every word that she said. And also thank you, Doug Sato, for connecting Dr. Christina Lee to us. Next, I will be calling forward senior student Leia Reddy. Leia Reddy was recognized last night for being an outstanding collaborative communicator by her teachers. Leia will be attending Chapman University in the fall. And I have no doubt that you'll be impressed with her speech. Leia. Hello everyone, my name is Leia Reddy. To my fellow students and teachers, thank you for creating the school that now stands today. By building the clubs that exist and being the guinea pigs for every new project and idea. When I look back at how far we've come, I am so proud of everyone that made this school possible. Sato has been an amazing experience with all of us collectively sharing in opportunities and challenges along the way. The most notable challenge being the roller coaster project in 10th grade. What was extremely stressful at the time, we can now look back and laugh at the struggles we encountered as a class. This shared sense of camaraderie is in part due to the small class sizes at Sato, but also for us being the first graduating class. Although we did not have sports at Sato, we had robotic competitions, visits to the California Science Center, and more. By creating every club on campus, we have furthered our knowledge in both pathways and led the way for new Sato students. Sato is unique in that it has both the engineering and biomedical pathways. Going all the way back to freshman year, we had engineering classes with Mr. Perez and biomed classes with Mr. Wiley. We have always had access to the best equipment from 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC machines, and my favorite, the Natamage virtual dissection table. We were even able to perform PCR and clone plant DNA with Mrs. Araya in the biomedical innovations class. In the four years that we have been at this school, we have done so much, winning at competitions like HOSA and MESA for medicine and engineering respectively. As a HOSA member myself, I would like to say thank you to my fellow students for helping to build Sato HOSA. And a special thanks to our advisor, Ms. Dale, who helped us to go to state and national competition these past years. HOSA has been such an incredible opportunity, exploring different options in the medical field, competing with students from across the world at competition, and seeing all the different applications of medicine. There are also many friendships that were born from HOSA, since students have become so involved in running the club, but we know we are leaving the leadership in capable hands. We also have an aerospace department at SOTO, which includes both a rocketry team led by Mr. Mills and a remote controlled flight team led by Mr. Gallo. There's also CSF California Scholarship Federation led by Ms. Byrne and Momentum Robotics, which has won many prestigious awards over the past four years. 
All these clubs are made possible by our amazing ASB and Mr. Rigney. As we prepared for college our senior year, we have our teachers to thank for writing our letters of recommendation and reading countless essays. These teachers make such an effort to develop a relationship with their students, creating a safe, welcoming community at Sato. The hallways are always filled with students at lunch, going in and out of teachers' rooms, talking to them about new movies and shared interests. A thank you to Mr. Bombach for this and Mr. Dees, who did an incredible job preparing us for our APs. There is both joy and stress on campus, but regardless, teachers are always there to listen and to ensure students receive all the help they need. A special thank you to Mrs. Charles, who is leaving with us, an amazing teacher, and will be missed by everyone at Sato. Everyone on this campus looks out for one another. Sato is very unique in this way since we have small classes and for us, we were always the oldest on campus. Whenever we made mistakes, like sometimes procrastinating, the students would help and encourage each other. We even learned the meaning of collusion and the importance of communication. <laughs> Being the first is never easy, but we were all able to do it, just as Eunice Sato was the first Asian American to be mayor of Long Beach. Our class honors her memory and being the first graduates of Sato High School. We will continue the legacy of being trailblazers into any field we pursue. I want to say thank you to all the teachers, staff, and our parents for supporting us. And now I would like to take a minute to give a special thank you to a very special person who has devoted so much to this school. This person has sacrificed countless hours to build up our school, Sato, and it would not have been able to, we would not have been able to accomplish everything we've done without her. This person is Miss Mona Merlo. Thank you, Miss Merlo. <laughs> what I would like to leave you all with is to be kind to everyone always, to be the best version of yourself, and you will be able to accomplish anything you wish. Congratulations to everyone and thank you. Thank you, Leah. Clearly, you did not get the memo that we are not to make Mrs. Merlot cry until after the ceremony. <sighs> Thank you, that was beautifully said. In fact, you and I should have collaborated because I think we have about a similar speech. Next, I would like to call to the podium uh, Brendan Brang. <laughs> Brendan was recently recognized as Sato's most inspiring student for overcoming challenges over the last four years. Brendan, despite all of these challenges, will be attending UC Berkeley in the fall. Please come forward, Brendan. Thank you. Okay. okay, so before I start my speech, I want to thank Dr. Lee for her touching speech um, it's something that really hits me and uh, my family personally. Um, as a first-generation Cambodian-American, um, you know, I relate to a lot of those struggles and I can see it in, you know, my own parents and my own family. Um, to all my Cambodian-Americans here in the crowd, um, I want you all to know that our parents and grandparents have faced so much hardship and it is up to us to make them proud, to become Mem members of the community that are just the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi. My name is Brendan Brang, and I've questioned myself my entire life. Where does your beauty come from? <laughs> Where does your intelligence, your skills, your talent come from? Are we predisposed with these qualities or are we molded by what's around us? I spent high school with no idea uh, who I was. Like a robot, I marched through classes and did projects that I was never passionate about. Back then, I did it for a grade. Back then, I could look into a mirror and not recognize the person looking back at me. Over time though, I realized it wasn't just a person I was looking at, I was looking at myself. 
Recently, I was awarded the most inspiring student at Sato Academy. Thank you very much, all the teachers. Um, why was I chosen, I asked myself. Uh, I'm a child that struggled, but managed to succeed. Last year was one of the hardest times of my life. As many of you know, I lost my home, my confidence, and most importantly, my grandma. And with everything I lost, there is something I regret not appreciating before it was gone. It was from these challenges that life hurled at me that I managed to get up and keep going. I succeeded not because I was privileged and born with an innate ability to read Shakespearean literature or do calculus. Trust me, I can't. <clears throat> I succeed because of what I see in my class of 2019. I saw a group of students and teachers turn challenges into accomplishments every day and decided that who I wanted to be was that. I succeeded because I had all of you behind me and cheering me on. In this experience of pain and regrets, I felt like I had a lot of reasons to give up. However, what kept me going and what inspired me was all of you. Teachers, you have become my family. Friends, you are my support system throughout my four years of high school. It is because of what you've done for me in these last four years, I can stand in front of you, now confident and excited for what's about to come. We all fear something. For me, it was the fear of not being good enough. I pushed myself for so long because I feared that I would be a failure. I pushed myself to succeed in so many aspects of my life, both in and out of school. Currently, I've lost almost 50 pounds, began studying subjects I am truly passionate about, and I'm at the best place in my life now. I know that I will continue to improve and grow, and I'm not afraid anymore. In ninth grade, I wrote a poem about a single red rose in a field of white flowers. Today, that rose represents all of us, blooming to our full potential. We'll leave the fields we came from and be introduced to fields full of flowers of many more vibrant colors. We will continue to bloom no matter how far we go. Through all those hard times here, through many classes, assignments, and friendships, we never lost anything. We gained something new that would guide us forward, and here we are today. Our graduating class may not be as big as it was in the beginning, but our hearts have never been bigger. You! class of 2019 are the first ones that made it. You made it. Thank you to all the families and friends who are here to celebrate us today. And to all those people that wanted to be here and couldn't for any of all reasons, don't worry, we know you're here in spirit. In closing, I quote Iron Man. I love you 3,000. Thank you, Brendan. It has been a joy to know and work with you through these four years. And now it's my turn. Of course, unless you want to just go with Leia's speech and we can move on, <laughs> or I can read my speech. I've probably written this speech a thousand times in my head. I know I've redone it at least 10 times in Google. And this is what we landed with as of like one o'clock today. So this is what you get. I'm going to take the opportunity to share the accomplishments of the class of 2019 as a whole over the last four years, some of which was already highlighted by Leia, but let's face it, you need to hear something multiple times for it to really sink in. First and foremost, Sada Academy has the most dedicated and hardest working group of teachers and staff that I have had the pleasure of working with in my 32 years of education. Please give them a round of applause. Students have been presented opportunities to challenge their thinking, encourage collaboration and communication, and integrate the disciplines and industries to make learning purposeful, beneficial, and most of all, engaging. The original goal of this school was to replicate the CAMS model. It pleases me to say that we designed our school on the idea of CAMS, but we have emerged truly as our own identity with a program full of opportunities not found on any other campus in this district. The class of 2019 and their teachers have surpassed all expectations in terms of regular classroom instruction, 
integration of industry, club and student accomplishments both in and outside of the classroom, SAT and SPAC scores, and so much more that we don't have time to share with in this venue. Like Eunice Sato, for whom we are named, Sato Academy is small but mighty. Eunice Sato is the first female, female mayor of Long Beach and committed her life's work to serving the community of Long Beach. Like Eunice Sato, Sato Academy has had and continues to have many firsts in a long line of accomplishments in just four years. Sato has, quick, has become quickly successful because of, we value working together in a collaborative model that involves every teacher in every classroom with every student every day. None of what we have accomplished so far would have been possible if it weren't for the strong foundation that is laid in our classrooms by our teachers. In addition to our teachers and our students, we have the strength of our parent, guardian, LBUSD, and community at large support both in and out of the classroom. It is because of the strength of our whole community that our students know that they are supported in all fronts of their education. I would like to take a few moments to reflect on the past four years since we opened Sato. Please keep in mind that these are only a few of the many accomplishments and first, as I promise to keep my speech as short as possible. Ninth grade highlights. Sato opened with 120 students and six teachers. Seven students participated in Mesa competition at Cal State Long Beach. Clarice Hokia won first place for the ninth grade practice SAT test without a calculator. <laughs> Our HOSA program formed under the guidance of Ms. Dale and Ms. Anaya Blade takes second place in the HOSA state competition as a freshman for job seeking skills and represent Sato at the national competition. Momentum Robotics was established as a community-based team housed at Sato Academy, but was primarily composed of Sato students. Ham Radio. Ham Radio is born with the support, support of the Sparavon family with the donation of the equipment that belonged to Dexton's grandfather. <laughs> Tenth grade highlights. Sato grows to 215 students and 11 teachers. We host our dedication ceremony and Doug Sato shares with the community that if Eunice could say anything to the students, she would say, together, anything is possible. Our identity is beginning to form. Mr. Lenny Perez approaches me with, elementary engineering day, we can do this, in which all of our students travel to 26 elementary schools to positively impact thousands of elementary students in one day. The potential about reaching possibilities of students and encouraging them to pursue STEM and engineering related fields. Our first physics day evolves and thus is born that 10th grade roller coaster project that you've heard about. <laughs> that first year was truly a lesson for all of us. HOSA, Ham Radio, and Mesa clubs continued to expand and we swept the math competition at the 10th grade level we had calculators that year, and several other awards. Key Club, RC Flight, Rocketry, Environmental Science, STEAM, Genders and Sexu Sexualities, Society of Women Engineers, and Running Club emerges. Our Dragon Drone Team forms with Mr. Gaio. Students built and programmed the team drone and took first place in the state competition. The team traveled to Indiana for nationals but did not end up in the top three in the nation and we were not told exactly where we did fall in line with the other teams. 11th grade highlights. Sato grows to 302 students and 17 teachers. AP classes dominate your class schedule. <laughs> students take the PSAT for the last time and the SAT for the first time. Students begin to take classes at both Cal State Long Beach and Long Beach City College. We hold our first semi-formal. Fidget spinners become so popular that many campuses across the district ban them from the classroom. But here at Sato, we took them apart, we questioned why some bearings were more efficient than others, discussed the physics behind the bearings efficiency, 
and then proceeded to 3D print and laser cut our own personalized Sato fidget spinners. We continued with exist, uh, existing clubs from the previous years and added the following to our club options. The Board Game Club, California Scholarship Federation, National Society of Black Engineers, Peanut Butter Club, Red Cross Club, Speech and Debate, Young Americans for Freedom, and Saline Team. We embark on the second elementary engineering day, impacting thousands of fourth and fifth graders again to pursue the engineering and STEM programs. This year, we take over 60 students to the MESA competition, where we now swept the glider competition, along with several other awards under the advisement of Mr. Mills. Solar Boat emerges and takes fourth place as a first year team with Miss Araya. Our drone team wins the state championship for the second time in a row. However, the students have other commitments, such as college classes, internships, and jobs, and were not able to participate in nationals this year, even though they were told they had one of the highest scores in the nation. 12th grade highlights. Sato grows to 412 students and stabilizes at 17 teachers. APs continue to dominate the student class schedules. Dragon Crew forms to support our freshmen with Miss Anton. More students are taking classes at Cal State Long Beach and Long Beach City College. We embark on our first journey through the college application process, letters of recommendation, and FAFSA, supported by Mr. Maliwatt and our college intern, Ms. Ms. Campos. We enjoy an ASB ice skating night, our second semi-formal, first prom with a prom court, our first grad night, and now our first graduation. We added more clubs, anime, chess, creative writing, Dungeons and Dragons, and business clubs. We assembled two electric car teams under the guidance of Mr. Lenny Pettis, a female team, Women Masterminds, who placed first in the state, and Dragon Warriors, the male team who placed third in the state. Our drone team just last weekend won state championship for the third year in a row with the second highest score in the nation for this competition. The team will be traveling to Indiana in August in the hopes of securing the national title. There is so much more that I could share, but we don't have all night, and these kids want to get on with the program. It is our students and teachers sitting on this stage, and with the support of their families and friends and the communities of Long Beach Unified as a whole, that have made Sato Academy and the class of 2019 what it is today. Nothing short of amazing. Please give this class a huge round of applause. Class of 2019, I hope you take this advice with you as you go on to the next chapter of your lives. Success does not happen without failure. Expectations are based on trust. And choices and challenges work together in a cycle. When you experience success, enjoy it. When you experience failure, learn from it. Trust that the expectations that are set before you are for your benefit. And recognize that sometimes the choices you make cause your challenges. Sometimes challenges are presented to help you grow, be open to challenges, and be open to change. Most of all, it is your choices that will make all the difference in the world. Choose to be organized, choose to be engaged, choose to participate, choose to follow your passion, choose to be nice, choose to be helpful, and most of all, <laughs> choose to make a difference. And remember, as always, this is my classic line for these kids. The choices you make in the next six years will directly impact the way you get to live the next 60 years. Choose wisely. Thank you. I made it through. <laughs> I would like to take a moment to go off script a little bit because there's a lot of people to thank who have not yet been thanked. And they're behind the scenes, but they're the only reason we're standing here and getting all of this done. I hope you noticed and I hope you heard all of the clank 
and uh, saw the bling that the students are wearing, but that didn't magically just land around their neck. Somebody had to coordinate four years of data, a lot of data, not all of it necessarily in our own systems to pull from, some of it self-reported by students, some because students uh, emailed information to us that they received from College Board, and putting all of this information together. Miss Magnolia Barajas, where are you? And Miss Connie Joyce, would you please come to the stage and be acknowledged? Come together, come together, come together. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Magnolia is truly the second mom on campus, and they know this, and you all know this because of attendance. But um, she's had their back every step of the way, and she has a massive database, which I got to help her create in Excel. Mm -hmm. uh, but she has done a, a fabulous job, along with Miss Connie Joyce getting all of this put together. So one last applause for the two of them. And of course, the real, real behind the scenes, Mr. Maliwatt, would you please stand and come forward? And Melissa Campos, I know you're here somewhere. Where are you? Would you please stand also? And she's down in the front row over here. <laughs> Gerard is my full-time counselor. He is absolutely amazing at everything he gets done, including supporting the entire college application process. And Melissa Campos, we were fortunate to have as a college intern this year. And I cannot tell you what a lifesaver she was and how much we learned from her as far as developing system, systems that we will continue to move forward. Unfortunately, she was an intern and is moving on, hopefully to a full-time position to where she can flourish as a counselor. So thank you both. Are you ready? No, I'm Okay, please welcome Board Vice President John Meyer to the podium. Thank you very much, Mona. <clears throat> if I may, I'd like to share with you an experience of about a week and a half ago. I walked to the front office area of the Sato Academy, and there were some students lounging there. So I introduced myself, and I said, uh, give me some insight into this school. And they said, well, we love this place. Our teachers are the best, our principal is the best, the support staff is over the top, we just love it here, there's a great family feeling. And I think that speaks to the spirit of this graduating class of Sato. Congratulations, one and all. <laughs> Sato Academy of Math and Science, class of 2019, please stand. On behalf of the Board of Education and all the teachers, administrators, and counselors who've educated you over the past 13 years, I hereby certify that you have met all graduation requirements of the Long Beach Unified School District and declare that henceforth you be recognized as graduates of Sato Academy of Math and Science. Symbolic of this passage, move your tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations. for coming tonight. This concludes our commencement. The students will process all the way outside through the lobby and outdoors where you can join them there. <laughs>